All right, this is the next video by the Mind Fitness Method, and I'm Dr. Eric Aiken. In this video, I want to talk to you about 12 things, I'm sorry, I already screwed it up, 10 things that can uh, help you to exercise if you don't really like exercising. So, um, now, here's the thing. These lists like this, I see this stuff, and some of them are useful, but uh, by and large, these things are just, uh, they're weak, okay? I'll go through the list very quickly, but you have to understand why this stuff, these techniques that I'm telling you actually work. And, I, and so some of them, um, I'm gonna be very frank with you here. I got this list, I Googled this question, and picked the first list that I found, and I'm about to present that list, but neuros, you know, I'm a neurosurgeon, I'm a scholar, and neurosurgeons and scholars of, in, of all various fields uh, like to dig a little deeper on things and figure out you know, just exactly how they tick. So a, a cutesy little list about 10 things you can do so that you can work out when you don't like working out is not really good enough, okay? I, I gotta understand, you know, why it works. And if you, and with the understanding that I'm about to teach you, then you're gonna have a much more sophisticated uh, understanding of how your brain works and, and then how to use it so that you can persist with your efforts in exercising, okay? So, and also, you can use this same information uh, when you are trying to persist in your efforts to self-regulate your eating and sticking with a diet too. Now this stuff is powerful that I'm about to tell you, but first let's get past the stupid list of 10 things that you can do to, to make yourself exercise when you don't like to exercise. <laughs> All right, number one, commit to consistency. <laughs> okay, commit to consistency. I hope I'm gonna have enough room on this thing. Number two, hopefully you can read this. By the way, I, I'm, I'm new to YouTube and I, I kinda like what I'm doing here, but the thing is I'm noticing is my set is really boring. Now, I, I went, I'm gonna show you something here. I went over to uh, Hobby Lobby and I bought this table thinking, you know, this table might be pretty cool for you guys to look at. <laughs> but I don't know what's gonna look good on this set. Maybe, all right, look, the email address for the Mind Fitness Method is eric, E-R-I-C, at mindfitnessmethod.com. If you want, you know, maybe you can send me, email me some suggestions of what you'd like to see on the wall behind me that, so it's not so boring. All right, back to the, our list of things here that, will, that you can do so that you can Stick with exercising, even if you don't like to exercise. So the next thing on this list was baby steps. Baby steps. That means don't try to do too much too soon. Now, I'm going to tell you, these tips are useful, but it's the thing behind them that's what's most important. So baby steps. Don't do too much too soon. Next is pick fun exercise. That's important. Exercise. Next is bring a friend. Next is bring a dog. Next is bring music. All great ideas, okay? Especially if your friend is competitive. Uh, and, or bring someone you kind of don't like. Uh, and, you know, when I was in medical school, my first year of med school, um, you know, I, I had gone to a, a Christian college. It was a very, you know, strict environment. You had a curfew, had to be in by midnight. Um, and you, it was very difficult to live off of campus, except for, like, you had to really go through a lot of rigmarole to do that. But I went through the rigmarole, let me tell you, because... After two years of that, I was just like, look, I'm going to come in. I'm 20 years old. I'm coming in when I feel like it. But, but that said, it was a good environment. It's Christian college, nice, wholesome stuff. But 
Um, my, uh, my English professor at that school, her son and I were the same age, and we both got into medical school the same year. And she came to me, and she asked me if I would be his roommate the first year. And, and so, you know, I, I agreed to it. You know, she, I felt honored, you know. And then I realized why she was pushing that so hard, because this guy... Oh my gosh, he was so competitive, man. He just drove me nuts. He even, he wanted to compete. First, it was like the obvious things. We both played tennis, so he wanted to compete in tennis. He wanted to compete in um, grades, obviously. We're, you know, we're in medical school, uh, which, by the way, he couldn't keep up with me. I smoked him out of the water, but in any event. And then he wanted to compete on girlfriends. How do you compete on girl? I mean, I, I kind of get it. But I didn't even care about girls at that period of time because I was like, man, I'm trying to just keep my head above water in this medical school thing right now. I'm trying to get into some neurosurgery school. And uh, anyway, so the bottom line was my grades were like, whew, that first year. And I did well all the way through, but I really did well in large part that first year because my competitive roommate. And um, so bring someone that you don't, you know, necessarily, maybe that you feel a little animosity toward that you want to compete against and uh, that might help you do better. All right, now, uh, next thing on the list was, uh, what was it? I'm cheating, I've got a list behind this thing. Okay, caffeine. Caffeine. Caffeine kind of increases the, the norepinephrine a little bit, kind of takes the pain out of it, decompresses your thing. Uh, now this is where, um, oh, what, what is it? Okay, music, dog. Oh, join a team. Join a team. Team. All right. Again, I'm not making fun of the list, but I kind of am, okay? Because when you just have this, but without a real understanding of why it works, uh, because these things won't get you out of hating exercise in all circumstances, unless you understand the underlying theme here. Um, Nine was, um, I'm trying to act like I'm just thinking of these, remember, but I've got a, I've got a thing behind the, th the uh, camera that tells me what it is. Nice clothes. Nice clothes. Wear nice clothes because, you know, then it'll make you feel better about your <laughs> exercise. <laughs> I don't know how that actually works, but maybe it does for some people. And then reward yourself. Reward yourself afterwards, I guess. Okay. So this is your 12 ways that you can exercise or start exercising and even if, and keep with it, even if you don't like to exercise. Let me get to the concept here. So self-efficacy. This is something I'm going to talk about a lot in these videos. And if you don't understand self-efficacy, you're never going to really lay down the foundation that you need to lose weight and to get the body that you want. Because I don't care, really, short of you having some major uh, uh, inherited, you know, metabolic disorder, uh, probably the vast majority of you, 95 plus percent, are able to lose weight, okay? If you can get the mental part of this down. And that's what the mind fitness method channel is about it is teaching you the mental game of sticking with diet and exercise and also sometimes we're going to present things that diets and and workouts that we think are are superior uh, from a research standpoint but but so why would some of these things work um, self-efficacy is a special kind of confidence a confidence in your ability to organize and execute certain behaviors in order to get a specific outcome. That's the definition of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy has been studied for over 40 years, and I'm telling you, we don't spend research money on things uh, for 40, on, on, on topics uh, for 40 years if they're not damn important. So self-efficacy is extremely important topic to understand in sociology, I mean, in, in psychology. So, if you don't believe that you possess the skills and or are, are able to execute the behaviors and organize the behaviors in the right sequence in order to lose weight, then you have really very little chance of being successful in this in the long run. And, and what we want to do is teach you 
first of all, what affects your self-efficacy, how to build it up, and number two, make you aware of the things that can lower your self-efficacy, sometimes when you're not even thinking about it, because some of it has to do with what we call cognitive biases. This is the way people's brain, people are sometimes naturally biased a certain way. You know what bias is. But there are some cognitive biases that exist through almost all humans. And, and so one of those biases is called construal bias. And construal bias means it's, it's, it's how you um, uh, construe bodily sensations or bodily or, or psych, psychological arousal, okay, when exercising. If, you know, whenever you start to exercise, the epinephrine and everything starts to rise in your, in your bloodstream and, you know, you're, you start to get, you know, you know, adrenaline going, you get pumped up and you're, you're psychologically aroused in that. Some people naturally have a negative reaction to that psychological arousal. They see that as something bad. And some of us see it as something good. Now, I remember when I played football in high school, and, and at the end of a high school football game on Friday night, when the game was over, you'd feel yourself like coming down. You didn't even really know that you're in that so high on that aroused level until the game was ended. And it was like you felt like yourself coming back down to earth, like landing on it on the tar, you know, landing on the, uh, at the airport on an airplane, mentally speaking. And so it, it's impor important to realize that you might be somebody who reacts negative to, negative to, negatively to that, that arousal that occurs when you begin to exercise. And therefore, when you do, you become more sensitive to the bodily sensations that you're having. And when you have those bodily sensations and you have this negative shade over them, like there's something not necessarily good, maybe they are a sign. Let's just say you start jogging or running, jogging, and you start to feel a little winded or you feel a little burn in your legs because you haven't been exercising. You might perceive you're going to hone in on that sensation. It's going to make you feel like, uh oh, more pain's coming. You know, that constral bias is going to tell you, first of all, it's going to tell you, this is a sign of your personal inadequacy. And that's bad because that's going to lower your confidence in your ability to sustain regular exercise. But if you choose instead to look at that bodily sensation, that first the arousal is a good thing, and look at the bodily sensations that you have afterward, you're going to start, you should start to think, ah, I'm getting a little bit of a burn. That means uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing something that's going to actually help me. This, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, getting my money's worth on this exercise. But it also means, you know, you can think more objectively. Maybe I need to slow down a little bit. Maybe I need to alternate walking with running because I'm kind of new at this. And, you know, I don't need to overdo it because if I overdo it, I'm less likely to stick with it. See, so you'll start to think more strategically if you have higher self-efficacy, higher confidence that you have the ability to execute and organize behaviors to get your desired outcome, which is a great body to be looking sexy. So another good example of contrail bias would be somebody who is a seasoned public speaker, like a, like a, like a former president, versus somebody like me which I never speak in public. I mean, really virtually never, except for the very small groups of people, um, maybe families when I'm talking to families of my patients. But short of that, I'm not really doing a lot of public speaking. So if I got up on stage and I start sweating and feeling my sweating and maybe feeling my pulse, you know, rising, my constral bias is going to be negative. I'm going to, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm feeling my arousal level and I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm going to clam up on this stage and oh look, my heart rate's up. Oh, that means that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to really just lose my place of what I'm trying to say and I'm going to forget what I was going to say and I'm, people are going to think I'm stupid. Whereas a seasoned president who's a you know, former president would get up on the stage, he'll feel that pulse rise, but he just knows that that's part of him getting kind of geared up, like, you know, clicking up all the, clicking all the uh, little switches at the, on a rocket before it gets ready to take off. It's like... And then by the time he gets on that stage, that, that increased pulse to him means something good. It means I'm getting ready to blow these people away with how, you know, 
how eloquent I am as president, former president of the United States of America. Anyway, uh, so, so it's very important how you, uh, re that you realize your tendency uh, to construe things either positively or negatively when you're getting that emotion, that uh, psychological arousal in, during exercise. It, or again, remember, if you have a negative construal bias, a negative bias, then you're going to be more sensitive about the things that you're feeling and you're going to attach negative meanings to them. Whereas if you have a positive shading to that, you might attach positive meanings to them and you'll be more likely to keep going, okay? Now, that's why, in fact, there's, there's a famous, uh, you know, a common saying among Navy SEALs. They say, uh, pain is just weakness leaving the body. Now, you just think about that statement. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. What they're trying to do is give you a contral bias. See your pain as something good. It's your weakness going away so that you can be a warrior and kill our enemies. You know, that's a perfect example of how they're trying to give you a frame to see your pain uh, through, so give you a lens to see your pain through. So now, um, now, how does that apply to this list here? The more that you think externally while you're experiencing these negative visceral sensations. By visceral, I mean your internal body organ stuff, okay? Your muscles and, and, and so forth, your lungs. If you are more internally oriented and thinking about every little thing that you feel you, and you have a bit of a negative shade on it, then you're not, you're not going to do very well with uh, sticking with it. You'll be so fixated on it that any moment that that sensation jumps up a few notches when you're really you know, increasing the intensity or whatever, you're just going to have it, a very negative experience with it. And when we have negative experiences, we, we go away from pain and we always migrate toward you know, pleasure. That's the pleasure pain principle, right? So you want to not notice it so much. And the only way to not notice it is there's two ways. Number one is to have a positive construal bias, like I mentioned. And number two is distraction. So nice clothes. Those are external to your body and you're running with your clothes on. You're thinking how, you know, if you're wearing a really great, you know, warm up or cute shorts or tight top, or whatever, I don't know if you're a girl, man, whatever, but the, you get the idea. You're thinking more externally, like what do people see when they look at me in this little cool outfit, you know? Uh, so you're thinking externally, not internally on your body. What about the caffeine? Caffeine will increase the catecholamines in your bloodstream, which makes you feel pain less. So you will basically, you're just dampening down the internal cues a little bit by drinking the caffeine. Joining a team. If you're on a team, let's just say you're going to play soccer or basketball or whatever. Well, you're more focused externally about what all the other people on the team doing, which takes, takes it down a notch about how much you're thinking about what's going on inside your body. Uh, bringing a dog, an obvious distraction, bringing a cat, bringing music, all of those things can potentially distract you from the inner cues so that you're not so fixated on them and having a negative response to them. So, you know, the other things are important too, baby steps and, and, and commitment to consistency and rewarding yourself. But, but you're seeing now why doing these particular things works this way. It's because of self-efficacy, your confidence level in your ability. And some people, when they think that, um, you know, their self-efficacy is low, that they're not really good at doing some kind of exercise, that will automatically crank up their s sensitivity to their arousal level that occurs during that type of exercise. And so, for example, if I were to get in a, you know, some of these... I have a friend who she's been a, 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 a fitness trainer and she's been like a, she, you know, she leads the, the exercises, the aerobic exercises, fitness instructor. And, and, and so she does all these things, body pump and, and body attack and all, and, and, and all these different exercises. And um, she invited me to go to some of them. And I like some of them. Like there's, you know, ones where you're punching and kicking and, 
and body pump and stuff. But she invited me to one one time, and I get in there, and they start playing this really uh, high beat, you know, music that sounds just like it's it's kind of I don't know. It just didn't make me feel good about myself. It was too dancey. It was very dancey music, and and so she was in it, and the exercise was very. <laughs> It was very dancey. We were in there, you know, I can't do it. But anyway, we were, it, was, it was too dancey, and I felt like I was like a little ballerina girl. So I didn't think I was going to be good at that, first of all, either. You know, I, they, they were doing all these dancey moves, and they, the other girls, I was the only guy in the class. I, sh I should have been a clue. But so, <laughs> but as it started going, I thought, I can't do these dance moves. Like, they knew the, the sequence of moves. And, and, and so as I was trying to do it, I was starting to realize, man, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get good at this, and I, I and, and so my self-efficacy about even doing the work, the exercise was was low, and it was increasing my sensitivity to my internal cues, and I didn't think, you know, it, it just seemed too hard for me. So you got to pick something that you have a reasonable, you know, idea about yourself on that you think, yeah, I could probably do that, you know. Uh, if you don't think that you could play basketball, well, don't pick basketball as your exercise form. If you don't think that you can be good at lifting weights, well, on lifting weights, I think lifting weights is so important. Um, guys and girls, I think lifting weights is so important that if you, in the beginning, don't feel that you can lose weight, then get yourself a trainer to help you in the beginning. If you can, if you can at all afford it, do it. And then you will eventually gain the self-efficacy as, as you exercise. Plus, some of you who are, are sensitive about people looking at you, maybe you're quite a bit overweight and you're worried about what people are seeing when you, when you walk in the gym, you know, um, don't worry about that. And, and a good way to distract yourself, excuse me, from, from worrying about that is to get with a trainer. And, um, and, and, and the truth is, is, Every gym is kind of like a small community, and everybody's used to seeing the same people over and over again every day. And uh, if, even if you're terribly overweight, if you consistently are coming in over and over and over, after a while, in, you know, it's just like being in school when you're a kid. In the beginning, you're the new kid, and everybody's looking at you and thinks you're weird and kind of laughing at you. But then if you're consistently coming in, you're part of the community eventually. You just have to do the time. You know, and usually that's a matter of about six weeks, really. Once people have seen you sit there six, six days, you know, six weeks in a row at the same times, you're in the in crowd at that point. You know, now they expect to see you. And if you hadn't been there, at, you know, like if you fall off the wagon and stop going for a few weeks and then get, go back, people will be like, hey, man, I hadn't seen you around. You know, they'll be checking on you a little bit. So uh, just for those of you who have a little bit of self-efficacy, you know, worries, about doing exercises of various kinds, treadmills or, or dancey classes or whatever. So that's the deal. Um, Self-advocacy is so important. You gotta understand everything about it. I've got more videos that I'm posting. I've got, already had one out uh, that talks about uh, some of self-advocacy. Uh, just go through them. I'm gonna talk about it a lot because it's an extraordinarily important topic. Um, I hope that you found this video uh, helpful. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like what I had to present here today and click that little like button if you liked it. And uh, I really hope to see you in the next one. My name is Dr. Eric Aiken and remember it is your brain that maintains the change.